I would love to know, I think to the leaders of, of the different agencies, what your method is or what's your approach to your um, to your you know your employees. I think every every group is probably really different. And so I wonder if anybody wants to tell me what how you feel like you're approaching your, your workforce. Sure. At HRSA at DSHS we're doing a grassroots. We're letting the staff tell us what they would engage in for their health. Does that seem to be resonating with them some? Well, I was just thinking about a success and I thought in this particular administration, there is so much energy now around a three peak for the governor's health plan, plus the changes that last a lifetime coming together. And they're so excited to just be well that we're having to rein in some of the energy that they're putting into it because they're bombarding the intranet with wellness messages and that could have a negative impact on other people that don't want to be bombarded with that kind of messaging. So um, they're just, we're pulling them here like this. So to me that is a bit of a success is that there's so much energy now that we have to corral it. Is that a lot of people or is it a small, really excited group? It's a small, excited group right now, but we have a lot more people aware of our wellness program now because of that small group. I'm Steve Rendell from the Attorney General's Office, and what approach we're taking is not 100% clear, quite frankly, as we look at all of these different models of change, and we're really trying to implement them on many different levels. So um, we are taking a step back. We are engaging with leadership. We are being given an audience to be able to share screening results, and we are receiving support to actually implement some of our interventions, some of the computer programs, <coughs> allowing employees to access those and um, use a reasonable amount of time during the workday to, to be able to improve and pursue their own wellness um, goals. I believe that what this is doing is helping employees understand that it's okay. And many employees, I believe, um, really have such a strong work ethic and such a strong belief that there's so much to do that they, they can't be distracted by wellness issues that I believe working on, I mean, essentially I've been, a, I've been converted into the culture of change approach, but that as we, as we are trying to create a different culture, um, create, modernize some of the policies that we have, change some of the use and the practices and the procedures that we're able to um, get employees to believe that it's okay and to participate. And I believe that, I believe that they are, and we're, we're getting participation in many of the different interventions, but we have a long ways to go. Right, and it's so interesting that you say it's, it's getting them to feel it's okay. It seems so simple. It's so simple, you know, but it's, but that permission sounds like that's one of those universal things that is so, is so um, simple that it's sort of it's under the, the radar screen. What I know is that many individuals just say, I don't have time. Right. I don't have time, and so it is trying to create that setting where they can feel like they have time, whether it's important enough. And that continues to be a mission of mine is to try to figure out how to also not uh, work on culture and, and help individuals understand that, that it's important for themselves and for us. No, that's cool, that's interesting. That is easy to do. I'm Kari from the Department of Health. And we really have been focusing on collecting all of our data sources to create that baseline and then assessing the needs and interests of our employees and that the data will actually drive our interventions. Well, here's a thought. I, th these are three sort of different um, and a little bit surprising approaches to what you're, what you're doing. And, um, I would um, hope that in a year, so September next year, We'll have, um, we have two weeks, two little legislative sessions in between the big ones. So the September committee weekend next year, I would hope that we could have some of you come and talk to us about what you're doing and how you've, and, and, the, and the changes that you've been able to make. I think that Scott's really right, that, that some form of evaluation will have to resonate at some point. And, um, and that will be um, critical for, for even the, even the most um, converted are, are going to have to see, see the numbers. I'm always compelled, I mean, stories are mostly compelling to me, but um, 
um, but not really the folks who write the budget. So um, I look forward to having you all keep doing what you're doing and, and tell us more in the future because I know that there is a, an increasing interest in prevention in our, in our insurance rate in the world. So that's it. I, I'm sure that you want me to move along. <laughs> I think uh, Rhoda touched on a couple of really important things. And one is that we have a window of opportunity. There is high interest, and uh, that door will be open, but we need to walk through it with the right things. And one is that we have to be data driven. We really have to carry the data through. The, the history of programs like we're doing has been that they have not been data driven. Uh, if you look back, they focused on a lot of the same things. Uh, helping people exercise more, eating well, stress management. I mean, these are not new, but they weren't data driven. They didn't know how to collect the data. They didn't know how to measure the impact, and they certainly didn't have any link to productivity. They were just nuts. So the data is essential. And we got our first round of data, and it was fairly impressive. Uh, I actually had a chance to do one of the committee weekends, like Rhoda mentioned um, earlier this month, and. Um, presented the data, and uh, you could tell that the legislators were somewhat amazed. And uh, we also had ESD present with us, and they told their story, and I think that went well to have senior leaders say, here's why it's important in my agency. So I think as we move forward, the data will be essential. What really drives the data is people getting engaged. But you have to have that data to take for it, and I think the other thing that will be essential is that the senior leaders and the agencies will have to see value. And it has to be value that they perceive as valuable to them, not that we say it's really good, you better leave it, you better believe it. It's like they have to see that it fits into what they're doing. And then they can carry that sto story forward differently than we can. So uh, the data and senior, senior leaders seeing value, I think, will be very important.